Well, hello there. It's Thursday. I don't really know what I'm going to talk about, apart from the fact that I'm going to go back to sea tomorrow. I have to get a taxi at about half nine, ten o'clock, uh, and then hop on a train to Lowestoft. I, I will be taking my cameras with me, but uh, I'm not allowed to film on board ship anymore. And it wasn't due to me. A lot of, a lot of the, uh, I think some of the, some people said, oh, it's because you were filming. Well, no, it wasn't because I was filming. It was just DEFRA's policy. DEFRA didn't even know that I existed, uh, really. Um, but <laughs> as uh, anyone who's, who can attest, who's searched for my ship on YouTube, you will not find it. Simply because I never mentioned the ship's name in any of the titles. Unlike some of the scientists that we had on board who published lots of photographs with the ship's name in the title, uh, which brought attention to that. Anyway, uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about. But it, I will be taking photographs off the ship. If I do get any time off to go ashore in the evenings uh, after work, then uh, I should take my camera with me and we'll get a few pictures just to see how it goes. Um, I won't have my my own internet router this time because I'm trying to save money so I'm cutting down on that but I'll, I'll just put my phone in the window and I'll use that as a hotspot I think anyway I've got my new glasses here they are nice and they've got reactor light lenses in uh, because that's what the optician said would help um, because they said I was developing a cataract in my right eye they said cutting down on UV light entering the eye will make a difference. And uh, uh, as we're finding out, that UV rays are, are quite a broad spectrum of different types of UV radiation. There's UVA and UVB. And apparently one type of ultraviolet radiation will penetrate glass, but not to an extent that you'd get sunburned. It's about reduced by about 50%. And the other UV UVB is it that's that is completely blocked by the sun so what these do they react inside my car behind the glass windscreen of my car they'll cut out those rays getting in hopefully hopefully so that now that I've uh, got these permanently set uh, you know for my you know normal normal use so when I do go outside if I do forget my sunglasses then these will take care of it for me um, yeah, I do have a, a set of non-polarizing lenses in the car for, for driving um, simply because <laughs> I can't see my reversing screen with the polarizing lens on. It all goes dark, so I have to tilt my head sideways to see the reversing screen or take my glasses off. Um, anyway, the garden's looking really nice. I must take some pictures of it actually, um, even, even if it's just for my own benefit. But yeah, the, some of the, the pansies and violas that come out are really pretty. I do like those. Uh, especially the, the little yellow ones down there with their little tiny monkey faces. They they do cheer me up. Um, I, I put some. I put a picture in. I'll take a little picture now and then you can <laughs> save you waiting to the end. But there you go, weren't they pretty? Uh, I do like flowers, they are nice. But we've got some, we've got lots of roses in the garden. A big tall rose tree that we've got there over there, which is about good eight, nine feet tall, 
Um, most of the roses have died on it now, but there's a few new ones coming out. Sarah's, Sarah's got some more yellow roses in the garden here, which she absolutely adores yellow roses. So uh, I too tend to, to when on her birthday, I, I did look in the shop for some yellow roses, but they were all a bit, we say, downtrodden. Uh, anyway, so uh, I didn't get really, uh, any roses this year. But if I do see a tub of roses, you know, you get these um, metal tubs for indoors. Um, that's what we've got in the garden now. We took them out of the tub and put them in a pot in the garden. And they're doing really well at the moment. They've come up really good. Um, yeah. Uh, that's about it, really. I haven't, um, haven't really been sitting in the garden very much this week, simply because of the weather. It's been so blinking awful. It's been raining almost every day. When when um, I drove down into town yesterday to pick these up, it was tipping it down. But I, I seem to be invisible when I'm on the roads. There was two cars on the way into town and two cars on the way back. There's only eight miles there, eight miles back. So every four miles, somebody pulled out in front of me. Um, yeah, so I had to do two emergency stops there and back. Yeah, not impressed with the driving at the moment. Other people's driving, of course. What, um, what I'm uh, waiting to see is uh, the new speed limiter come in. Um, I'm sure that, that that's not going to work. I really don't think. Because what we need is what they have in the new cars. One of the new cars that I drove recently, uh, I think it was a cash cow, had this adaptive cruise control. It simply meant if the car in front slowed down, you slowed down or it allowed you to get to a certain distance from the car in front and then it slowed you down. It either just took you the, your your imaginary foot off the accelerator in cruise control and slowed you down or it would actually apply the braking. If the car in front suddenly did an emergency stop, you would come to a stop as well. And that's one of the good things I like about modern cars. One of the one of the things I don't like about modern cars is all this push buttons stuff where you've got sliders on a piece of uh, glass screen where you have to slide your finger up and down. Yeah, it's not. I do like being able to put your hand on a button, take your eyes off your hand, and put your eyes back on the road, and then adjust whatever it is you're going to adjust. Whether it be the the um, most most cars have got volume controls on the on the steering wheel, uh, but it's the heating really. If you want the fan on a bit more, but I tend to, uh, when I'm driving, I tend to just set uh, the controls normally. Some, sometimes I have to uh, reduce uh, the heating or increase the air conditioning because it's either got too warm or too cold. Um, but very rarely do I fiddle about with the instruments in the car. Um, but yeah, the, the modern cars, I don't like these uh, things. That you, you, there's no place to steady your hand. That's that's a, that's a, what I would consider a dangerous part. Having to take your eyes off the road to uh, make any adjustments. Yeah, it might be fair enough if you're stopped somewhere, but um, it's probably just as bad using a mobile phone. Which, of course, I did see a couple of people using their mobile phones in town. This is why we need more cameras at junctions where the traffic lights are. Because that's what happens. You get to you, you pull up to a set of traffic lights... You have a look behind you or you look to your left and the guy's on his phone straight away. It's, yeah, when you say, well, okay, he's stopped. But being, <laughs> driving when you're, you know, looking at your phone when you're stopped means that you're distracted because when the lights change and you look up and see everyone else is gone, you're, you're not aware of what's happened in front or behind. There may have been someone walking in front of your car. You look up and see that the lights have changed and away you go, but you've just run over some toddler or mother in a pushchair who's crossing where they shouldn't be crossing. So, yeah, I, it's not a good idea to have your eyes off the road when you're stopped. Um, everyone's got sat nav these days. So no, no more picking up a, a map book and having a read, is there? Um, I don't even know if they still make map books. We're, we're still using the map book from, from 2020. Sarah has that one. Sarah uh, is not that much of a, um, she's a, she's a technophobe. She won't use her iPhone to uh, look up maps and stuff. She, she wants to get the book out and have a look. Well, it's up to her. That's her choice. And uh, I don't blame her. All I can do is just help her find the location that she wants to go to when we go on holiday. Well, 
I think I'm going to go over my eight minutes uh, on this little chat. So um, I won't actually um, monetize the, the middle part of this um, little talky talky thing simply because it's um, it spoils your viewing pleasure, as it were. I know there's a few of my friends out there that like to uh, listen to these very long um, talky talky videos. I think it's, um, you know, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. But it's, it's, it's kind of beneficial to some people. Um, some people don't like it. Some people do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do a longer one today. Try and get it up to eight minutes um, for my friend. Um, I won't name him, but um, you know who you are. Uh, yep. I know, uh, I know a few people don't like me talking about Donald Trump and what's been happening in America. But we have to stop this um, nonsense where... A few lefties who just happen to be like in, in power, I'm not talking about politicians, I'm talking about civil servants who, who can turn around and do whatever they like. Like in America, there was one particular state who took Donald Trump off the ballot paper so that in this 2024 election, his name wouldn't appear. Now, that is unconstitutional. Surely that should be up to the people to decide if they want to vote for Donald Trump. It doesn't matter whether you like Donald Trump or not. We have to follow the law. We cannot allow these lefties to say, oh, no, 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 we, we can't possibly allow him to be voted on because that is vote rigging. That's what Hillary Clinton did back in, in um, uh, when Donald Trump was first elected in 2016. Yeah, and more news is coming out of the Biden crime family. That's right. Joe Biden... Hunter Biden, we know Hunter Biden's going to spend about 23 years in prison for his drug use. And uh, uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of the case, but he declared on a form that he wasn't a drug user when he applied for a gun license. Well, he was addicted to crack coach cane and he lied. So federal, federal crime, he's going to go to prison for up to 23 years. So that's him out of the game. And we're also finding out that Hunter Biden went to America with his dad back in 2013 when his dad was vice president for Obama. He took his son to China and Ukraine. And it's funny, isn't it, how Joe Biden met with Hunter Biden's um, client in China and they struck up a deal which led to a multi-million pound deal going to the Biden family. Yeah, now, if that's not insider trading or, or whatever rules uh, that they've broken, where the, pres the, the vice president uh, used his authority to strike up a deal with China, I, um, yeah, there's lots and lots of stuff going in, lots and lots of stuff that we're not being party to at the moment. And that's got to stop. That is corruption. And this is what people don't like about Donald Trump. Donald Trump will expose this corruption when he gets back into power. That's what I think anyway. But do I like Donald Trump? Well, I'm not a huge fan, but I'd rather have Donald Trump than Joe Biden. Yeah, I wouldn't want Donald Trump as a neighbour or I wouldn't want him to live with me. But I do think that he's doing the right thing in America. Uh, anyway, it, there's lots of stuff coming over at the moment. He's he's had that um, uh, that I started talking about was the one of the, one state in America who blocked him on the ballot paper. That's been deemed unconstitutional by the Supreme Court now, and it does look like he's going to get uh, um, this Supreme Court will take over this criminal conviction that he's been given as well, that's going to be squashed. So there's two huge victories for the Trump. Yeah. And, of course, people don't like Nigel Farage either. That's simply because they've been told that they don't like him. They've been told that he's racist. Now, I've never heard Nigel Farage say a racist word in my life. I've, I've, I've watched right from the early days when the mainstream media said, oh, you can't trust the Farage, this, that and the other. It is a big hate campaign going on. I actually stopped and, and listened and my, my whole attitude towards um, Farage changed. 
simply because I'd actually sat and listened to what he was saying. I, and I suddenly realised that I do agree with him. Talking about the numbers of migrants is not being racist. It's being a realist. And as we know from the uh, one scientist who did a full study on, on, uh, on the left and right, he said that you're mi more likely to be attacked by the left than you are by the right. And of course, I don't think that anybody that's in British politics is anywhere near far right at the moment. Nigel Farage is, is simply slightly right of centre. Whereas now with the Conservative Party, they are slightly more left of centre now. They're more of a lefty party than Labour. Like I said the other day, Labour and the Conservatives are two different cheeks of the same arse. You know, one will simply allow the illegal migrants to come in without challenging them, and the other side will welcome them in with open arms. And it ain't good. We cannot, we cannot as a nation allow this to continue. We're, we're only a small island. If you actually take the, the image of the UK and put it onto a real image of, say, Africa, Africa dwarfs the UK. The same as Europe. The UK dwarfs Europe. It is, we just can't keep taking in this many people. We're, we're struggling at the moment. We, we've got an NHS that was pretty good. Now it's rubbish because there's not enough funding. Um, I know there's a lot of waste and that needs to be sorted out, but it's for another day. Um, anyway, let's get on to something else. Let's get on to something more uh, happier. Uh, as someone once said, the, the universe sees what you're doing. If you're unhappy and moaning, the universe feeds you stuff that makes you more unhappy and more moaning. So let's talk about something really exciting. Well, this month has been one of the best months in my entire life. Well, I don't just mean in June, but this month that I've been at home, this four weeks that I've been at home, have been absolutely amazing. Getting news that my, my daughter, who lives in France, is pregnant with her. my first grandchild is absolutely out. out I'm over the moon. I'm absolutely uh, gobsmacked. And I'm really, really looking forward to um, going down to see her uh, in, in France. We, we managed to book some tickets. Yeah, I tell you, £18 a ticket cost to get down to the, the France on the airplane. So that's £36 return. It's me and Sarah, that's £72. And the rest of the £293 charges was made up with every everything else. Like if you wanted a seat, it cost you another £4. If you wanted to take a bag, it cost you another bit a bit more money. You know, if you want if you want a boarding pass, oh, oh because we've got because we paid an extra 20 quid for the luggage, they've actually given us a free boarding card. This is a boarding card that you need to get on the aeroplane and they're not going to charge us for it. Wow, thank you, Ryanair. Oh, I'm not really looking forward to Ryanair. <laughs> After watching that TV series many moons ago, it was uh, really, really was <laughs> horrendous watching that programme. Um, who was it? It was the, the guy from Blackadder did the voiceover. That was right. That was, um, I can't remember his name now, but yeah, what a horrid uh, air, air, air crumb, uh, company uh, Ryanair is. Anyway, so but we, we got this flight booked. £293 return for me and Sarah. And parking, we got to pay for parking. It's um, They were going to charge us £900 for a taxi to get down to uh, Stansted. Uh, I think the train was, uh, for two of us, was more like £150 each way. So uh, I'm gonna drive my car down. That's the only answer. 90 quid to park for uh, the 10 days that we're going will be 90 quid. So that's that's the cheapest option, uh, you know, if, if the government wanted us to use public transport, they'd make it cheaper, wouldn't they? You know, 300 quid for there and back on the train for, for two of us. Nah, I don't think so. Just 90 quid round trip. 
and the pet and the petrol but that won't be much it's only it's only about 150 miles there and back well there 150 miles there and 150 miles back 300 miles that's less than a tank full of fuel it's three quarters of a tank uh, and if we take sarah's car <laughs> it won't even register on her on the thing but um, she might be getting a new car soon anyway before we go to france she might be getting a new car um so that's that's my uh, the happy thoughts about going to france to see my daughter and then uh, the other thing was Sarah's paid off the mortgage. We got no more mortgage. We're mortgage free now. This house is our house, and that's it. And uh, we're going to get a new kitchen. We've um, we've got some images that we went to um, uh, one of the places in town that came and measured up the kitchen, and they took three D. Uh, they well, they've rendered it into a three D design so that we can actually stand with our phone and look turn around and see what it would look like um if we were stood in in our new kitchen already and it's going to be so much better it's going we're opening up so much more space um and of course now that we've started to declutter we, Sarah's got one more cupboard to do and I've got my cupboard to do um so that's going to be well decluttered by the time we come to get everything ripped out it's going to be absolutely fantastic uh, now we have to find a builder who can, um, once the, the units have been ripped out, we'll have a blank canvas. So we're going to take all the horrid artexing off the wall. We're going to maybe take the artexing off the ceiling and put some ceiling lights up. But we'll have to see how much that costs because uh, we haven't got much of a budget. Um, and what the other thing is that we're going to do is we're going to have a new floor fitted. Uh, we're going to go for um, uh, some of these uh, stone type tiles. In there, these big tiles anyway, so we might have that put in. Uh, that will be rather splendid. It'll be easier to clean and maintain properly. Um, I don't like lino. Um, Sarah had lino down when I moved in, and, the, and of course, the, like I said before, the dog ripped it up and took everything out. He, well, he ripped up most of the lino in his frustration, poor little thing. It was the first time that we actually left him on his own uh, on for firework night, thinking that he w was... Um, was over it but uh yeah unfortunately he didn't he wasn't over it um anyway that's rambling on oh yeah i've gone on for far too long far too long anyway so if you do manage to watch it all the way through all right i shall be taking some pictures when i get back to work uh off the ship of course so it'll be it might it might be a, a a vlog on friday night if i've got time if i'm not on duty and uh or might be early early saturday morning if we haven't sailed i don't know what's going on i don't know where we're going but i do know that we're going to be paying off in portland um i don't know if you know portland it's, it's down in weymouth way there's a there's a tiny spit of land that um comes out it's, it's really just a shingle bank that they put a road on and there's like an island that's been connected with this shingle bank um i did take some photographs last time i went there of uh, there was a helicopter landing it was coming obviously um a place that did helicopter repairs it wasn't an airfield so it was um obviously somewhere where they repaired or serviced helicopters in in portland there's a few bar pubs just outside the uh the, the dock gates it's a bit of a walk from from what i remember but um if you're in need of a pint it's not too far to walk as as we all as we call a test you know if you've ever been desperate for a beer a few yards down the road ain't gonna stop you anyway so i rambled on uh coming up for 20 minutes um i hope my sunglasses don't make me look like a in a playground and uh which is this is one of the things that uh, put me off having relaxed a lot reactor lights in the first place was uh, the fact that they make you look um a bit sinister anyway right so that's it i'm gonna cut it short before i get to 20 minutes have a great weekend if I don't see you before. Um, everybody that's there, just say hello in the comments because I, I do like to read your comments. I do try to answer every single one of them. Uh, but sometimes I can't. Uh, but I will read every single comment. Okay, catch you all later. Have a great weekend if I don't see you. Goodbye. <laughs>